Uh, hi, my name is Sarah Hicks and I work at MF Property Management as a property manager and I am joined here today uh, with David Auda from Cowan Insurance and we're here to talk about uh, condominium insurance and how uh, it impacts condominium owners and our first topic will be the different kinds of condos that there are. So there's not just one standard condo, there's a variety. So David, if you want to shed some light on that? Right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, condominium insurance is one of those things that is just not understood. Uh, for good reason it is complicated and I like to tell people that um, in order to um, understand the type of insurance you need it's important to know the type of condominium you own and uh, there's a little trick that I personally use um, as you know sir um, when a condo is registered it's a corporation and it has a legal name so um, the type of condominiums generally in Ontario are standard condominiums common elements condominiums, vacant land condominiums, and these can be built in phases. So technically three types of condos and for an owner, the best way to know is writing the name. It's registered as either a standard condominium, common elements or vacant land. So in that case then, insurance comes after you understand what type of condo you purchase. So, Condominium owners, uh, condominium corporations are governed by a law and this is the, currently the Condominium Act of 1998 that's currently uh, being revised. So what the Condominium Act says about insurance can be found in section 99 to 105 of the current condominium law. I encourage unit owners to familiarize themselves with this section because property insurance is defined for owners in those sections. And generally, the Act says that the corporation is to insure the property of the corporation except for improvements. And that's a very key item there. The corporation insures units and common elements except for improvements to the unit. Uh, as a condominium manager, I greatly encourage all owners to be very, very familiar with their standard unit bylaw and make sure that your condo has one, especially uh, if you're looking to purchase. Some of the older ones uh, may not, uh, but I would say it's been standard for many years now for there to be a standard unit bylaw. And this is where um, the document will clearly outline what is the responsibility for the uh, condominium to cover damage-wise in the event of, an, of a claim? Uh, and then what the unit owner would be responsible uh, to cover. So as David already mentioned, improvements to the unit are something that the condo uh, would not cover typically. And contents are something that are never covered by the condo. That's a very good point, Sarah. The sole purpose of a standard unit bylaw for a condo corporation is to define for owners what is an improvement. Remember earlier we said that Condo Act requires a corporation to ensure damage to units and common elements but not to improvements. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes necessary for the corporation to define for its owners what they mean by improvement. And uh, this is a point where uh, people get tripped up quite a lot because the standard definition of improvement is very different than what the condo corporation uh, would define an improvement as. So generally, an improvement is anything that is not standard. So for owners, a standard unit bylaw will outline, outline for you what are the standard components of a unit mm -hmm. and anything that is not included in there is considered an improvement for which the owner is responsible to ensure. Right, and so this standard unit bylaw can vary from condo to condo. So say you lived in a condo before and it covered, say, your drywall, you move into another condo, perhaps it doesn't include drywall at all, or it might be uh, the pre-paint, the paint, uh, if we're talking about floors, could be subfloor, could be floor, not carpet. So make sure that you're familiar with what it is and that your insurance provider is also aware of, about what the standard unit bylaw says, because it could impact um, what your own insurance Correct. covers. Yeah. Correct. And uh, one uh, other item that I also see unit owners quite often uh, not understanding is 
uh, flooring. You know, right. flooring, when you purchase a condo, brand new, it may come with flooring, which mm -hmm. the builder would have put in there. Now, based on your standard unit definition, mm -hmm. flooring would automatically become an improvement. Right. So that floor covering, depending on what it was, uh, linoleum, carpet, yeah. hardwood, could automatically become an improvement based on your definition. So a uh, typical unit owner's policy, um, you would see liability, which uh, essentially covers um, third party liability where a third party could sue an owner, um, usually typically sold in millions, so you could purchase a million or higher, uh, depending on your needs and exposures. Uh, a typical unit owner's policy also includes coverage for your contents. Um, I like to say that if you took that unit upside down and shook it, everything that falls out is your contents. Now, your insurer would expect you to let them know what the value of those contents are. So it's important as an owner to have a general idea of what it might cost to replace everything within your unit. Mm -hmm. Once you take care of that, it's also important to have coverage for what we call additional living expenses. Um, this covers any scenario where your unit might have had a fire and you need to stay at a hotel temporarily. A unit owner's policy accommodates that. So um, you need to speak with your insurance agent or broker to ensure that you have adequate limits for that. Now, of course, the next item would be improvements. As we discussed earlier, improvements are the responsibility of an owner to ensure. So it's important to ensure that if you live in a standard condominium, and this is the only condo that requires a standard unit bylaw, a standard condominium, then you would need to ensure that the value of improvements is adequate to cover everything that is defined as an improvement. Right. So in the event of it being a common element condo or a vacant land condo, obviously those are not the same as a standard condo. So what would you encourage uh, a homeowner that lives at one of those kind of condos to provide to their insurance provider to make sure that they have the correct insurance uh, for that condo that they live in? That's a very good question. So for owners who have purchased a common element or so vacant land condo, it's very important that your insurer, your broker, your agent knows that you did purchase a condominium because in that case you do need a typical homeowner's insurance policy. However, given that it's a condominium corporation, you may still be responsible for some liability as a part owner of that corporation or some assessment when it comes to damage to the property of the corporation. So it's very important that your agent knows that you have purchased a common elements condo corporation or a vacant land corporation. In that case, you will get a homeowner's insurance policy, but very importantly, there will be some extensions that cover you for loss assessment in the event the corporation assesses a loss to all owners. So David, I was hoping you can just comment briefly on insurance deductibles and in the event um, of a claim, how does that work? Right. Now, um, a deductible, as we all know, is um, it's a form of self-insurance. So in most insurance policy, there is a deductible where the owner is responsible uh, for a portion of a loss. Now, the corporation as insurer of this units and common elements also has a deductible in it on the policy. Now, the Condominium Act says that this deductible on the corporation's policy is considered a common expense. Right. Now, the Act goes further to say that in the event an owner did something or fails to do something that caused a loss within their unit, that deductible of the corporation, if they were to put in an insurance claim on the policy, can become a responsibility of the owner who caused that loss. Now, I think it's really important because the Condominium Act does allow the corporation to pass a deductible to go much further than that. The corporation can pass a bylaw that says, as long as the corporation had nothing to do with this loss, it can assess 
the corporation's deductible to the owner's unit, regardless of whether they caused the incident. And this is a very important point because I feel it helps owners understand their responsibilities in the event of an insurable incident. Well, thanks for watching everybody and uh, thanks for um, answering our questions, David. Very helpful. Uh, so if you do have any questions with regards to uh, your condo's insurance, uh, be sure to contact your property manager as they're very familiar with the condo documents and what they mean. And if you have specific uh, insurance questions with uh, about the condo or your own unit, you can contact uh, your insurance provider. Thank you very much. Thank you.